We have Mayor Gene Stothert with us um, for the hour, talking to us about some growth and development uh, in the Omaha area. And we like to have the mayor on a couple times a year. And um, at, so, Gene, we were talking about the the big project that was just announced this week, uh, the Duo, which is the renovation of the Twin Towers, turning it into 700 apartments. But downtown's momentum right now is pretty impressive. Um, I looked up, and it's actually been quite a while since we had it in the show, because last time you were here, Heartland of America Park had not opened yet, Kiewit Luminarium had not opened, and Lewis and Clark Landing. So talk to us a little bit um, about uh, how you see downtown changing now that we've had all these blockbuster um, attractions open and and where and how we can how we can go from there now that we have these assets. You know, it's it's the growth downtown and what you see now and what is open is really unprecedented. You know, when I was at the groundbreaking for the airport new terminal, I did say, you know, I moved here 30 years ago. And 30 years ago when I moved here, there wasn't a Bob Carey Bridge, there wasn't an arena convention center, there wasn't a luminarium, there wasn't a steel house. You could, there wasn't a ballpark. You, you go on and on and on about just the last 20 years or so, and it's really unprecedented. And we're not done yet. You know, there's so much more in the pipeline. It was just announced recently, uh, we're gonna do an expansion on the arena convention center. Um, the uh, site where the Civic Auditorium was. We have a plan there. White Lotus is developing that. It's a great plan. I love how they redesigned it. And the, the, the Baby Bob is under construction that will connect the Bob Carey Bridge to right to the ballpark. You're going to be able to walk from Iowa to the ballpark now. There's just a lot of things underway. And so the momentum right now is just unprecedented. The parks, for example, um, there's been estimated over 2 million people that have visited those parks downtown. And I remember when we first started raising them to street level where the Gene Leahy Mall was, people were complaining, saying, don't ruin the parks downtown. And now the first, uh, well, I'll tell you, August 18th last year is when all the parks opened up, the other Heartland America Park and Lewis and Clark Landing. And just in one weekend, there was over 100,000 people. I drive by those parks when it's freezing outside and there's people there. The ice skating rink was tremendous tremendously successful. People were there all the time. So there's just more and more happening to bring people downtown, and there's more in the pipeline. Well, the proof is right there in that park. You see everybody from every part of town coming together. Mm -hmm. And that really is, I think, the the first spark that's really going to set the precedent for the rest of the development downtown. Jeff, I know you went down recently and just couldn't believe the amount of people. Yeah. yeah um, two weeks ago tomorrow, my daughter and I went. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We went down just to take a walk ar around mm -hmm. the park. And uh, all three parks were absolutely alive. Mm -hmm. They were active and full. And then what was interesting, Mayor, is that it spilled over into the old market. So we walked around the old market, did a little bit of window shopping, got a coffee, whatever. That's about the busiest I've seen the old market um, on a non-Friday or Saturday night mm -hmm. in a long time. And my, my high school daughter said to me, she said, it kind of feels like a big city down here. Mm -hmm. It does. And you know, you can walk, I've walked it. I've walked it the whole thing from Heartland of America Park all the way to the Luminarium. It doesn't take long, but the detail that is put in that park and you know what I really enjoy seeing too, there's a lot of tables and chairs and hammocks and all these types of amenities in there. And they, Nobody has done anything to steal them, to graffiti anything. People are so proud of it, they're taking care of it. And I love that. And it's safe, too. People feel safe. The lighting down there, the whole on the pier, everything. It's just, it's really beautiful. And I'm glad people are enjoying it the way they are. But when you stop and think about it with that luminarium there now and the big, the big playground by the luminarium, there's just so much for everyone to do. My grandsons go down there a lot. My six-year-old grandson, Raymond, told a group of kids the other day, my grandma built this. <laughs> I, I had to say, keep it up, Raymond. Keep saying something like that. You but, had your but, hammer. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, people seem to, of all ages, seem to love it. And so it's a great attraction. And what is being built up around it is just phenomenal, too. And like I said, but there's more. There's more coming. Well, speaking of more coming, um, well, first of all, let me say this. Uh, very few things are as intriguing to Grow Omaha listeners as skyscrapers. And so we've got this uh, Mutual of Omaha Tower under construction. It'll be the tallest building in a multi-state uh, region. Uh, everyone's super excited about it. I know as a construction nerd, I go and look at it every week and walk around. 
But once you get one new skyscraper, people start thinking, "Well, oh, what? Let, let's. How about some more? How about some more?" And that leads me to a question I've been I've been wanting to ask you: uh, the the empty square block that at 14th and Dodge, where the old Union Pacific headquarters right. sat for many years, was demolished quite a while ago. Um, that's now owned by the city after the swap with um, the the library land. Correct. What's the latest on that? Is that is the city going to issue uh, RFPs or has there any mm-hmm. been any any sort of developer that's expressed interest in that site? There has been developers that have expressed interest, but right now I, I kind of wanted to hold on to the RFP because we want the right plan there. You know, we don't want I, what I I don't want is is you know something two or three stories. Mm-hmm. I would like something tall. Um, I'd love another a, a tall building, at least, you know, 15, 20 stories there. And so we want the right development there. So right now we have put a lot of thought into what could be there, what what we want it to look like. But I don't have an RFP for that yet. We're kind of hanging on to it because another thing is, is we may be using that site for a lay down for the streetcar. Oh, so we okay. have to have a lay, we have to have a lay down site for the streetcar. Like, like the the block that is just east of Mutual is part of the park, but it's being used as a laydown now, and then it would become part of the park. Um, and and by the way, Mutual does have first right of refusal on that property just east of the Mutual Tower in case they want to build more there. And so we have to think about all of that. And so that's why I'm holding on to that now. But we want the right thing in that old UP site. And what does the right thing look like? Is it a residential component? Is it office? Is it what speak to what type of uses you'd like to see there? I think it could be mixed use. You know, originally, you know, we were looking at it as being more office and retail. But I think it could be a mixed-use development right there, too. Um, I've had some interest, say, from some that develop just apartments. And we're talking about maybe putting a, a two- or three-story apartment building there. But that's not really what we want. We want something much bigger that is a good fit for that. So otherwise, we're just going to hold on to that for a little while because, again, we may use that as a laydown site for the streetcar. So, Mayor, when we have you on the show, it, it kind of reminds me of when we have uh, uh, leaders from the Greater Omaha Chamber on, insofar as we know you know a lot of things yeah, that are on, on the drawing board, and we would love to know some of that. <laughs> but we also know you have to keep secrets. Um, at the press conference this week when you were talking um, about the duo and all that, you, you made a comment about many more ex- exciting developments could be coming mm-hmm. um, in the in the next few months. Could, could you put a little more detail to that tease <laughs> without, without divulging something you're not allowed to say? Well, uh, there's some things I'm not allowed to say, but there are, because you're working with developers and you're negotiating, you know, um, um, developments. And again, we always, I got such a great team now with our planning department, our law department, um, to get the right thing, the right thing that fits in that area down there. But I, I will say, I mean, one of the things we could talk about that isn't quite settled yet is the expansion of the Arena Convention Center. You know, that's coming. And and uh, nothing has been 100% settled yet. But we know that if we expand the meeting space in that Arena Convention Center, and we own it, um, we could get a whole new level of conventions, and we're losing out on a lot. You know, we have 16 meeting rooms in that arena convention center, and if you look at the 20 cities that are the the largest cities that are competitors, we are have the least amount of meeting rooms of all of them. And so, I mean, you look at Des Moines; they have 37. Grand Rapids, thir- uh, 26. Um, Oklahoma City has 27. We have 16. So the plan is to more than double that, add about 24 more. Um, the plan, like I said, hasn't been 100% settled because it will be. It's what we're working on is how it's going to be paid for. That's a city-owned building. Uh, it will be paid off in 2027. The debt we pay on that now is almost 20 million a year. So that frees up a lot of bonding authority once that is paid off. But it'll be a combination of like it was when it was first built of the city of Omaha plus private philanthropy. That's Perfect. a very exciting project because, yeah, when we built the uh, CHI Health Center, the focus was on size, you know, ballrooms mm-hmm. and, and trade show floors. And, mm-hmm. and now meetings have changed mm-hmm. and, and, and breakout rooms are becoming more and more important. We have the mayor of Omaha with us, Gene Stother. 
And uh, Gene, we you right before the break, we were we're talking about this expansion of CHI Health Center Omaha, more meeting spaces. Well, that could lead maybe to even a third anchor convention hotel. It it definitely would. I mean, it would be needed. Um, obviously, we've talked about that a lot. If you recall, the city owned the Hilton. Um, when I became mayor, I just felt like the city of Omaha did not need to be in the hotel business, so we sold the Hilton. So it's owned and operated by someone else now. But we definitely will, if we have more conventions and bigger conventions, we will need another full-service hotel close to the convention center. And I see that most likely being put on lot B, which is the big surface lot right across the street, um, adjacent to where the Hilton is. Probably would need another sky bridge that would connect that hotel to the Arena Convention Center. But this would be built by someone else. This would not be a city-owned uh, hotel, but we don't need we don't need to own and operate a hotel. The Hilton, if you recall, nobody knew how the the success of the Arena Convention Center. So it was a little different back then than it is now. But we do know now, currently, that the Arena Convention Center has a financial impact of the city of, of about eighty million a year. And so, I mean, there's a there's a lot going on there. And so uh, the the uh, the increase of the meeting spaces is important. We will have to get a new hotel, there's no doubt. Now, the city of Omaha obviously owns the parking lots. B is across the street by the Hilton. D is the one that is north. That's an even bigger surface lot. And if we put another hotel on lot B, then that could lead to developing lot B even more. And if we develop lot B, and take up the parking, it's the city's obligation to replace that parking. So we would be building probably a very large parking garage on lot D, which is the one that is north. And so, you know, there's a lot of moving parts with this now, but it's not just the the adding more meeting rooms, but it's replacing that parking, another hotel. So there's a lot going on that is in the plans right now. That's a Grow Omaha exclusive right there. That's true. We like yeah. that. <laughs> and hopefully that would be a, a, a nicer... Uh, you know, convention style hotel to maybe upscale brand. Yes, more upscale, um, full service, obviously, and you know, there's plenty of those around, and so that's just something that's that's in the works right now, but something that we know will be necessary. I think there's a, a demand for an, a, another parking garage even today. I mean, just going down there, mm -hmm. uh, people knowing exactly where to go. I think mm -hmm. is I think it's going to be a great next step for them. Mm -hmm. But that lot D, the one north, that's big. It's a big lot. And, you know, all those season ticket holders, the Creighton season ticket holders, you got to keep that in mind, too, because um, that that's not a very far walk right across the street. It's on ground level. And we got to keep that in mind of who has season tickets and who's going to all those games, because, um, you know, parking on Lot D is a lot further away. It's a that's lot right. longer walk. And so that all has to be walked, worked out. We're talking with Mayor Gene Stothert. Um, this week, uh, when you were interviewed after the announcement of the Duo Project, the, mm -hmm. the Twin Towers we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. the, the topic of grocery stores came up. Yes. And, and, and we've all been kind of dreaming about a, a full-service grocery store in downtown Omaha for, for a long time. Um, with the streetcar line coming up, uh, you know, the, the, there's more and more momentum toward that happening. You said something interesting this week, though. You said that uh, it, it, from what you knew, it seemed like we were getting closer to that magic number to support that downtown. And what was really interesting to me, uh, you mentioned that you, you think we're going to get one, but there are a lot of developers that maybe would like to have it, yes. but there's only one grocery store to go around. There's, they're, they're in competition for it right now, but there is that little magic formula that said you need so many residential people living downtown to support a grocery store, and we're way over that now. And so we can definitely support that, and it's needed right now. I will say, though, with the developers that I'm working with, with multiple, multiple developers, a lot of them are trying to get that grocery store downtown. And so it's in the works. I will tell you, there will be a grocery store downtown. Which development it will finally land in, I don't know, because they're still working it out. But, you know, I hear all sorts of... of Different grocery stores that I think would be a perfect fit downtown, especially with Creighton being so close and a lot of students, Central High is close. And so that will happen. I just can't tell you which grocery store it'll be or which development will get it because I really don't know now. But we definitely will get one and we definitely can support that now. 
Let's talk a little bit about Crossroads. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, big announcement there. Uh, Woodbury Corporation out of Salt Lake City is is coming into the market, playing a, a huge role. Mm-hmm. It's been a long journey uh, to get to this point, but but give us your assessment of where you think the Crossroads project is today and, and where we're heading. Well, I want to assure people it is moving forward, and it's bigger and better than it was before. I know I was asked recently Um, You know, is it in trouble? And it's not in trouble at all. It had a, a, a period of time after Frank Krejci, who was the sole owner of that property for a long time, died. Um, and he was the sole owner. And people ask me, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, what is the city going to do with Crossroads? We didn't own it. It was up to the the developer, which was Frank. And then he had a partnership, which is about 50-50, with, um, with Chip James and Lockwood Development, and they were both working on that development. Since then, and since Frank has died, there's been some changes, but now the company Woodbury, you just mentioned out of Salt Lake City, will be the owner. They will buy the property. In fact, they were, they're buying it in pieces right now, but they already have purchased some of the property. And the plans now show a redesigned, higher-value development Um, with a a commitment from the city of Omaha to own and operate some new garages. So that means they'll take down that old huge garage there that's in the corner that isn't in in that good of of a position. Now, in the original redevelopment agreement that we had with Lockwood and Frank, it said the city was going to purchase that garage for $35 million and we were going to own and operate it. Now we have to amend that original redevelopment agreement because we're not going to buy that garage and own and manage it. They will demo it. But we will own and operate probably three other garages that would be smaller within the development that would be in better location for the development. But um, I think they've let out some of the renderings of what it's going to look like. I like it. It looks great. It's high quality. It's it's uh, the way that they have reorganized things is going to be really great. It's less office than the original plan, but more retail and more residential is what we really need for that corner. So it's going to be really great. And, um, you know, it was first announced in 2020. But there, Woodbury, like I said, is on the development team. In the beginning, we were saying it was going to be about a $553 million project. And now the Woodbury say it's going to be about an $860 million project. So you could tell it's growing and it has more value and density. Well, we, we just have a, another minute uh, left with the mayor, but uh, um, we don't want we don't want to, to have you get out here with uh, about a few specifics about the streetcar. Mm-hmm. And so so we understand this is the first year where, we, where we'll actually see real construction. And uh, what are, what are we going to see and what will people notice when they're driving up and down? Uh, Farnham and Harney Street this year. You know, well, if you drive down Farnham right now, because I can see it from my office window, there's work ha- being done on Farnham by our utility companies, and that is streetcar related. So you will be seeing a, a lot more of that along the streetcar line. Um, we did put a bid out for the cars. Uh, we got a really good bid on the cars. It, it, it doesn't, it sounds like a lot. It's $47 million, but we originally predicted it would be about that much. We got one bid from CAF. What, and, and they are the ones that supplied the cars for Kansas City. So that's really good. So we will go and move forward with purchasing the street cars. We need to purchase six of those. We need to build the vehicle maintenance facility so we have a place for those street cars to go. And uh, right now we are on in about 60% design, getting close to 90% design. And so it's moving along. I mean, it's it's moving along. Um, um, the, the plan is we originally were going to bring it to 42nd Street. It's going to stop at about 39th now because, if you know, there's a hill there. But I will tell you, HDR, who's our designer, is currently working with the Med Center, and they want that streetcar to expand so the Med Center can use it. And so they they are working individually with HDR on that and will pay for that. The city's not going to pay for that expansion, but it will probably end up going to Saddle Creek. Um, and so it's it's just an example of as we move forward and the design moves forward, the interest in the streetcar is expanding. Um, we originally were going to bring it down 10th Street and stop it at 10th and Mike Fahey. And we decided we would stop at 10th and Capitol because we're already applying for a federal grant to look at expanding that streetcar north. And it's a perfect spot at 10th and Capitol to go north to North Omaha. And eventually, and I've told them at the airport, Keep it in mind that this streetcar is probably eventually going to get up to the airport, which would be great 
for Omaha, to, to, for you know people to land, jump on the streetcar. A lot of people that travel want to stay at the Marriott or the Hilton or downtown hotels. It would bring you right there. Well, there are some weeks we wish you had two hours of Girl Omaha. This There's is a one lot of them. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. There's so. a lot going on and a lot of good things to talk about. We'll just have to have you back, Mayor. I'd love yeah. to. Thanks. We always appreciate uh, your support and, and taking time to join us on the show and continued success success to you and all of your uh, your team down at City Hall. And thanks for having me. I enjoy coming in. Thank uh, you so much, Mayor. Our pleasure. Mayor Jean Stothert. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.